Okay, you probably can't even hear me. Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Weeza and welcome back to my world. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about maskne or acne caused by wearing a face mask. So right now, all of us are wearing masks or should be wearing masks. And our frequent mask wearing is now causing us to break out around our nose and our mouth areas. And it's just not cute. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you my ultimate guide to anything and everything mask me. So what is mask me and what causes mask me in the first place? How do you actually know if you truly have mask me to begin with and not something else? I'll also give you my tips to prevent and treat mask me altogether. And lastly, I'll let you in on my skincare routine, my mask me skincare routine. It's a very simple yet effective skincare routine that can help take your skin from mask me to mask me free in a really short time. So you're probably wondering, who is this girl talking to me about maskne? So hey, what's up? My name is Lisa. I do beauty and lifestyle videos here on YouTube, and I'm super passionate about all things beauty and lifestyle related. I use my scientific background to help debunk and help explain the science simply to you about your favorite beauty and lifestyle products so you can truly understand them better and make more informed decisions in the future. I group these videos into a series called Debunked, so this series right here. And if you're interested in checking out my previous debunked videos, I'll link them down in the description bar below so you can go ahead and check them out. As well, if you'd be so kind to hit that like button if you like these types of simply explained science videos as well as don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos so if you're interested in learning about everything that you ever needed to know about maskne then keep watching so it's important to know that maskne is extremely common more people than ever are wearing face masks and this is taking a toll on our skin so if you are suffering from maskne, then just know you're not alone. It's estimated that about five to 10% of the actual population will suffer from some sort of maskne. It's the concept of wearing masks with the additional stressors of the pandemic and the whole situation that's happening right now in the world that is contributing to making maskne the new normal. Luckily for us, there are preventative measures and treatment options that we can do to help prevent and take care of our maskne altogether. So Wiza, what is maskne? So maskne is actually a flare up of acne around your nose and your mouth area. It's actually a result of the mechanical friction, rubbing and pressure associated with that mask rubbing on your face. When the skin is constantly rubbed by something, it becomes irritated. It appears initially as small red bumps kind of looking like a rash on the skin. And if the skin continues to be irritated and aggravated, it can develop into more advanced acne like whiteheads and blackheads. Maskne is kind of like a cute little social media name to kind of help sexify or glorify the word face mask acne. Maskne is way cuter than face mask acne. However, it's important to know that the actual technical name for maskne is acne mechanica. The symptoms of maskne really vary person to person and depends on that person's unique skin type. People with overly dry or overly oily skin tend to suffer from maskne the most, as well as teenagers and young adults, as their skin is most acne prone due to hormones and all of that fun stuff that involves puberty and them growing up. So Weezel, what actually causes maskne? The friction, the pressure, the rubbing of that physical face mask onto your skin actually creates a lot of irritation on your skin. Now think about this, I'm putting this face mask on, I'm locking any of my air that I'm actually expelling. So you breathe out hot air, right? That moist air, moist, that moist air is going into the face mask and getting trapped, creating a very hot, humid environment that gets sweaty very easily. You know this, when you put on a face mask, it sometimes feels like you're just suffocating. Well, the face mask actually creates this really moist, dry, sweaty environment, which bacteria love. This creates additional discomfort and irritation to the skin and thereby increases your sebum or your oil production as a defense mechanism to try to protect your skin, not knowing really that it's actually causing more harm because it's producing more oil and clogging those pores and ultimately leading to pimples and acne. Hot, sweaty, and humid environments, increased sebum production, and clogged pores are all factors of acne. As well, when your skin's in a warm environment, it causes your pores to open up. Think about when you go to the spa, they steam your face before you do a facial because they want to open your pores up. It's the same thing what's happening under this mask. Your pores are now just wide open, ready to invite any bacteria, dirt, or dead skin cells right in so they can clog that pore, giving you acne and therefore maskne. I wanted to also mention that acne mechanica can happen anywhere on the body, not just your face. If you played or played sports which actually require heavy equipment like hockey or football, these sports actually require you to wear things like pads and helmets. The rubbing and friction and pressure of the pads or the helmet on your sweaty body actually creates acne and irritation and discomfort, giving you acne mechanica on your shoulders, on your head, anywhere where that friction rubbing is happening. So it's actually more common than not that if you've actually already experienced masking in your lifetime, you probably just confused it as a rash. 
So Weasel, what is acne exactly? Like, I kind of know, but I don't. So acne is when your hair follicle or your pore get clogged by things like dirt, bacteria, dead skin cells. There are many different types of pimple that vary in size and shape, but all are based on the same occurrence. The physical oil gland becomes clogged and even sometimes infected creating a pus-like substance to help fight off that infection and creating a swollen red bump on the skin. Two common types of pimples are whiteheads and blackheads. When your pore becomes clogged, your body initiates an immune response to help fight off that inflammation. White blood cells run, and I mean run, to fight that infection. Once they do their job, they die and they tend to accumulate on that skin surface, creating a whitehead. So when you physically pop that white head and that white stuff that comes out is actually dead white blood cells that came to fight off that inflammation of that clogged pore. Blackheads are also created similarly. The difference is that when these pores were plugged, the dead cells actually reacted with the oxygen in the air and then turned them black, therefore appearing black on the skin versus white like a white head. So Louisa, how do I actually know if I have maskne or not, or if it's a rash or if it's allergic reaction or whatnot? Maskne can only be diagnosed professionally by a dermatologist via a physical examination. However, if you're experiencing a rash or red bumps around your nose and your mouth area, it's more likely than not that you actually do have maskne. And if you think that you do have maskne, you can try my tips for prevention, which I'll share with you next, and kind of process of elimination it out. But if your symptoms persist and your maskne or your rash or your pimples and acne on your face gets worse, then of course, go and schedule an appointment with your dermatologist and get it professionally checked out. So now I wanna chat about prevention and treatment and how we can kind of prevent maskne from happening. And if we do have maskne, what can we do to actually treat it and be maskne free? Because it sucks. Itchy, irritated face, acne it's not cute we want to look cute and maskne doesn't allow you to be cute so i'm here i got you your girls got you i always got you so let's talk about face masks and the types of them and kind of let's weigh them out so if you're suffering from really bad maskne and you really just don't know what's happening and you're using a reusable mask i highly highly recommend you to invest in some disposable masks now I know this may not be the most eco-friendly or budget-friendly option, but this may be your solution. Your skin is just creating an excess of oils and trapping in that bacteria, clogging those pores, and you're not letting your skin breathe enough. These will actually allow you just to chuck them right when you're done with them, so you don't even need to worry about them. And for me, I truly believe that this material kind of helps blot, like acts like a blotting paper to kind of absorb those excess oils that is happening from that moist environment. Me personally, I do use the disposable ones. I like the fact that I could just throw them away, grab a fresh one, and I don't have to worry about residual bacteria and all of that other stuff that I may have to worry about with other types of masks. So my first tip would be invest in a disposable mask and change it often and more frequently if you can. Next, let's talk about cloth masks. So these are just two that I have, and it's important if you do use a cloth mask that you have multiples that you kind of have interchangeably. You don't want to use the same one every day without washing it. Absolutely not. You want to wear this once and then throw it in the wash. So you may want to have like three, four, five, or six kind of in rotation, depending on how many times you do laundry that week. So I'll wear this once, throw it in the bin for laundry. I'll wear this one once, throw it in the laundry bin to wash. Now, speaking of wash, we want to make sure that we're washing these with a fragrance-free detergent. Our face skin is one of the most sensitive skins on our body. For me, especially if I don't use the right, if I don't use the right soap, my skin will break out just, just by the, the smell of the soap. Like your girl has dry, sensitive skin and literally everything irritates her. So I have to be really mindful of the detergent and the soaps that I use. And even if you don't experience it on the rest of your body, you may experience that with your face. So just be very mindful of that. As well, we want to look for a material that's very soft and breathable. So I highly recommend cotton. It's my favorite. It's an extremely breathable material and it really allows it to reduce the friction and rubbing on your skin because it is such a soft material versus something like polyester or rayon, which really could irritate the skin. This one is also cotton, so highly recommend cotton, cotton, cotton. Lastly, on the topic of face masks, you want to make sure that you're putting on your face mask correctly. This may sound stupid, but I've seen a lot of people not know how to put a mask on properly. You physically don't want to touch this part, like the face part covering part of the mask. So you want to put the mask on like this. Through the ear loops. Adjust it just by the bottom and you're good to go. When you're physically wearing the mask, you don't want to touch the face part of it at all. Your hands are gross, your hands are dirty. And when you're taking off your face mask, you take it off again, 
by the ear loops and throw it in to the laundry bin to be washed. Or if you're using a disposable mask, throw it in the garbage. You also wanna make sure your face is clean before you put on the mask as well as after you put on the mask. You need to clear off that bacteria, that dead skin, that, that, that grossness that was happening while you were wearing that mask. Yeah, she needs to go. You need to clear off because that's contributing to your mask me too. Next, let's talk about makeup. Let's avoid makeup if we can. Heavy foundations like this guy right here and heavy powders. Don't get me wrong, I love a full face of makeup. Give me all of the bronzer, give me all of the foundation, just gives me a life. However, if I know that I'm wearing a face mask, I'm not gonna put on this heavy foundation and this powder. It's just not worth it in my opinion. And if you can, just go bare faced. Your face mask is covering most of your face anyway, so nobody will probably even notice. The reason we don't wanna wear heavy makeup under our mask is because makeup can actually seep into your pores and attract dirt and bacteria and therefore clog your pores and worsen your mask me altogether. So that heavy formulation of makeup like your foundation combined with your increased humidity, body temperature, sweating action underneath your face mask is just a recipe for disaster. So my solutions for my makeup lovers, my makeup girls, is you don't have to stop wearing it all together. My recommendation is to opt for a thin moisturizer. This will kind of keep your skin moisture barrier in check and keep you hydrated throughout the day. And if you need a little bit of color to kind of even out your skin tone, they do make moisturizers with a tint in it. So invest into a tinted moisturizer, CC cream, anything like that with a very thin consistency, not heavy like a foundation, will work wonders. My next recommendation is to use a physical sunscreen. So I talked a little bit about physical sunscreen, chemical sunscreen, all about sunscreen, everything that you ever needed to know about sunscreen in a previous debunked video. I'll link it down below. And a really interesting thing about physical sunscreen or natural sunscreen is it contains something called zinc oxide in it. And zinc oxide is a chemical found in natural sunscreens, which actually protect you from harmful UV rays. Studies have shown that zinc oxide actually acts as a barrier to friction. So it kind of lessens the effects of that mask rubbing up and down in your skin. So that's a huge benefit. You'll get less irritation and less overall acne from it because of that zinc oxide. So my ultimate secret thing that I've been wearing under my mask, thing I've been wearing kind of every day to keep me through my day is this guy right here. I've talked about her before, but the It Cosmetics CC Cream, she's a CC cream. So she has a little bit of like color correcting, kind of tones out the skin, evens out the skin tone. Love that. But this is also a physical sunscreen and it contains titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which I just mentioned. So I totally think that this It Cosmetics CC Cream has been like my secret sauce, my secret superhero from helping me combat mask me altogether. It's tinted moisturizer, keeps my skin hydrated. It has that zinc oxide in it to help protect me from all that dirt, bacteria, clogged pores, all of that fun stuff that I do not want. No, thank you, ma'am. And I just think she's been great to me. I highly recommend her if you want to give it a try. Yes, she's a little bit expensive, but she's completely worth it. And you only need a few pumps for your entire face. And I totally love her. So It Cosmetics CC Cream, she's the secret sauce. Also, when looking for makeup that you wanna wear, or if you wanna check your makeup that you already have to see if it's safe to wear, look for things that are non-comedogenic, oil-free, fragrance-free. These are all things that are perfect for wearing makeup under masks. Anything with fragrance, oil, stuff like that is just helping to irritate your skin, clog your pores, and just not it. Don't use it, or don't use it when you're wearing a face mask at least. And my last tip for my makeup loving girls is just wear mascara any lashes lashes make the world go around baby we love lashes on this channel i talk about the Too Faced better than sex mascara and how i love her so 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 much and a very affordable drugstore one that i love a lot is the maybelline falsies lash lift these are two amazing mascaras if you're feeling wild and you need to do a little bit more some something throw a colorful eyeshadow on or a colorful liner play up your eyes have fun with your eyes and just leave the rest of your face bare Let's talk about skin and our skincare routine, what we should be doing to help make sure that our skin is looking good and clean. My skincare secret is keep it simple. In this case, less is more. So let's stick to something that's simple yet effective. So I'm gonna take you back to skincare basics. I recommend washing your face two times a day. So once in the morning and once at nighttime. It's also super important to know that just because you have maskne or acne on your face, isn't the time for you to get wild with your skincare routine and start trying all of these new things. No, let's use products that we know work and won't break you out even more and irritate your skin. Let's stick to the basics and get back on track. So I'm gonna go through a simple morning and nighttime skincare routine with some recommended products for you to try. 
In the morning, you should start off with a cleanser, a simple gentle cleanser just to cleanse the skin. I recommend the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser or the Squalling Cleanser by The Ordinary. Two very simple yet effective cleansers that work wonders on skin. Keep in mind for the CeraVe, there's multiple options depending on your skin type. This one here is for normal to dry skin. I have dry skin. Cater your cleanser according to your unique skin type. Next, we wanna get a toner and we wanna kind of balance out the skin. I use The Ordinary Glycolic Acid 7% Toning Solution, love her. This has elevated my skin so, so, so much. I cannot say enough good things about her. So I'll go in with a lighter hand in the morning and a bit of a heavier hand at nighttime. And lastly, you want to top all that off with a lightweight moisturizer. So I use the Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus HA from The Ordinary. Love her. And if you can get something that has hyaluronic acid in it, it's a check for me. I am 100% pro hyaluronic acid. On the days that I actually need a little bit more of a boost or I'm feeling super dry, I'll add a few drops of the hyaluronic acid solution also from the ordinary just to kind of help elevate my hydration for the day so if you're feeling super dry add a couple drops of the ordinary hyaluronic acid and you will not be disappointed in the morning we want to avoid using heavy moisturizers with heavy occlusives in it things like cocoa butter or coconut oil which could actually help contribute to clogged pores because you're wearing that face mask and you're blocking the pores and you just got that heavy thick layer of moisture like it's not good it's not a good mix so you want to opt to use those at nighttime also if you are experiencing really irritated in red skin I also recommend you to incorporate niacinamide into your morning and night routine use a few drops of this guy in your moisturizer or alone and it really helps just to calm the skin down and help it repair itself faster adding it into the morning really just kind of helps prepare the skin calm the skin down to be like hey we're gonna go through a little bit of rubbing and friction today with this face mask on but you got this you're gonna calm us down that's what he does that's what niacinamide does for nighttime, it's actually very similar. You wanna stick with a similar routine and just kind of add a few things here and there. So we're gonna get home and we're gonna wash our face with our cleansers. We're gonna balance out our skin with our toner. And then you wanna moisturize your skin. So you can use something a little bit more heavier weight for your nighttime routine. I still use this guy, the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factor plus HA. And I'll also use the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentration Solution. It really helps just bring back all the moisture to my face and make me just feel nice and plump and juicy like a big bowl of moisture which I really really love and when I use these drops I'll add a couple drops of the hyaluronic acid and the niacinamide in there to kind of just make my perfect unique mix and just get me feeling like a big bowl of moisture a bowl of hydration just feeling plump and juicy ready to take on my sleep ready to take on the night yeah ready to take on the night so I do not recommend you to use any kind of scrubs or anything that may penetrate your moisture barrier on your skin. Anything sandpapery or gritty, just avoid it completely. You do not need it. I also recommend you to stay clear of AHAs or BHA solutions or chemical peels for the time being. Just kind of let your skin rest and let it kind of calm down. And then you can get back into getting wild and, and doing all of those chemical peels. But for now, if you have maskne, stay away from all of those peels. So this next question is probably one of my most asked questions is when can I spot treat? When can I use my active ingredients like my salicylic acid, my benzoyl peroxide, my retinols? I would suggest using them at nighttime. That's what I do. So I simply use this clean and clear acne spot treatment. It's literally just salicylic acid in a tube. If I get a bad breakout, I take a little bit, I put it on the affected area and go to sleep. If you have a really, really bad breakout and you want to treat it during the day, you can absolutely put a dot of this on. They even have those little pimple patches you can put on your face, then put your face mask on top. You're winning because no one's gonna know that you're spot treating underneath your mask. That's totally a plus of wearing the mask. No one's gonna see you doing your spot treatment. So there's a benefit to wearing a mask right there. I actually never thought of that, but yeah, you could spot treat during the day. No one will see it because you're wearing a mask. Okay, so that's Maskne debunked. I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that you learned something new about Maskne, acne, how it works, a little bit of science behind it, what causes it, how to prevent it, how to treat it, and my skincare routine. Before I sign off, I just wanted to say that by not wearing a mask is not a solution for Maskne. The consequences of you not wearing a mask and potentially getting something a lot more severe than a pimple or acne on your face, I know it sucks and it can be suffocating at times, like you can't breathe and just not fun, but it is worth it and it's for your safety and for your protection. We're all in this together and we can totally all do it and you got this, you got this. So I hope this video will help normalize maskne and let you know that you're not alone and it's more common than you think. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll catch you on my next one, see ya.